This is Cheryl McCoy, and I'm coming to you from Moodle MOOC 12. My video today is about course collaboration, team building, and course development as we end this session of Moodle MOOC. And in my team, the STEM team, wants to learn more and start today and help other people do the same. My team in this particular session was awesome. They were so uh, in tune with what we were doing and willing to try uh, th new things. And we really did a great job, I think, of building a team in a short period of time and uh, collaborating together. I wanted to go through and, and show you a little bit about where we begin in this process. So I am on the Moodle MOOC 12 initial course area, and this is the assignment that we are doing right now, the summation, videos capturing the steps of the team course collaboration. There are several things that we did. Begin the plan, meet and greet, thank and meet, the process of course development, that is organize and reorganize, our dream about the topic, how the plan was initialized in the meantime, and complete the plan. These are the ideas that we wanted to get across to you and be able to um, effectively explain to other people how this can happen so that they may be inspired or challenged to do this also. It's very rewarding and we each have a basic course framework that e e any of us can take to begin to develop a complete online class, very detailed in nature that we could actually use in courses. So how did it begin? Well, in the beginning, we went to the main course area, go to your little um, breadcrumbs, select the main course area, go to week one. Beginning in week one, you are introducing yourself to other people in the group, and you're trying to figure out what you want to do, where you want to go, how you will develop your course. You're trying to meet new people and, and give them information about yourself so that they can learn too. You're learning to use the Moodle course and the Rich Editor, et cetera, et cetera. All the basics, Screencast-O-Matic, this is where the course begins after you've introduced yourself. Team formation, where you start a discussion and respond to one other person. Here is my introduction and trying to learn about people for team formation. Topics and strategies of collaboration of the collaborative Moodle course. When I went to the uh, course introduction, topics and strategies, team formation, I decided this time I would tell everyone about something that I had done recently that I thought was very important, related to things that I'm interested in. When a Moodle for Teacher Professional Development Opportunities, I noticed that each of us share some very interesting, effective teaching and learning resources. For instance, Earth Observatory. I explained that providing instruction and various teaching resources, ways to begin the research process and determining valid information. This is what I thought would be a really good challenging collaborative team effort. I had my video here on uh, fires ra rage in Oklahoma. I had talked about it. Then each person answered information about that. And then I talked to them about Screencast-O-Matic. As we went through the project, this collaborative forum thread, I discussed what I thought was important. Now, the reason I did that was because I was trying to introduce myself, tell people, this is what I'm interested in. And gee, if you're interested in something like that, like talking about how to teach and use resources and activities and ways that we can do that to improve student learning and things of that sort, I'd like to be on your team. That was the intent of what I was doing there. When I went back to week one introduction, I'm going to let this naturally flow this time. After I've explained what I like and what I'm interested in, 
I decided I would just see what came from that that might be related. I went back to week one, create to select your group, which we had to do the first week we were here. We ended up with selecting groups. Our group was called STEM, Science, Teaching, Engineering, Mechanics, and it was loosely based around teaching the English language. There was another group, Designing Your Own Online Course. There was another course, Navigating a Course on Moodle. They were also very good. Right away, we got our six people. We're all in this together. Carmen, Helen, Emilia, Cheryl, Zara, and Mogala. We range from places as far away as Australia, Johannesburg, Tehran. I'm in the middle of the United States. Emilia and Carmen are in Europe. This is my group, and I was very happy to join with them. They're an excellent team, very sharp, interested, and active workers. I went through the middle MOOC and started gathering information for my course. I also answered those questions relating to learning and teaching online. When we got to blocks available for a manager, where we all began to talk within our team about things that we would like to see on our collaborative course. When we talked about the role of the manager, we talked about video tutorials of blocks as a manager. This is where we discussed what we thought would be important in our course. As early as week three, we were into doing this information on how to set up the manager practice area. We were also working on activities for week four. I made a video. The video was called manager practice area where I describe the basics. I am going to be speaking to you about the manager practice area. That's like our box in our Moodle MOOC main course area where it shows where we are as far as completion of work. I'm going to delete the completion progress. After you have added, moved, and deleted all the blocks that you are planning to do, then you will make one last check. I do want to remind you it's okay to move things around and do things, but don't delete anything that you did not put in yourself. Have fun. It's really a cool deal. You can see other people's information too. Later on, when you get together as a group, you'll be able to find out what you all want to do as a team to make your course. As you can see, I um, finished that and my other teammates were also practicing a variety of blocks and we were sending messages to one another through our forums when we were discussing what we were doing. In week four, we began to meet. Hi. Uh, hello. <laughs> I've been, been struggling for almost an hour. It's good to and see I really, you. <laughs> uh, I was given up. Can I was you see all now. our girls? Pardon? Can you see all our girls? Uh, I can't. I can't, I can't. Can you see each one of us? Pardon? Yeah, I can see this one, two, three, four. You are four. I'm the fifth one. Yes, yes. Woohoo! Uh, hi, hi, I'm Jan. Now I'm here. Okay. Well, that one's pretty enjoyable. I think the EVO goes really fast and it's fun and there's lots of things to do, but yet it's the one that I always got my. Uh, I always got my badges really fast for some reason on that one. I don't know why, but anyway. Okay. Yes, yes, Cheryl, and uh, yeah, we have so many different stories uh, how to uh, we manage uh, our online communication mm -hmm. and how did we learn. And yes, and it's just really uh, sometimes it's very stressful mm -hmm. when you try to do something, and but it's really very rewarding. And when we are together, we can learn together. There it is. I see it. I don't know if anybody else. Oh, here yes. Comes. Okay, no. uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. 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 Right. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to send one link. What you do? 
through this you know go this flip grid on this flip is... grid let's see this picture that is actually i added through flip grid my video i just i run just for a couple of minutes you will have a look later on Mm -hmm. okay what is uh well uh, we're, as so many of us are on the more things we do the harder it gets to see you know uh-huh but anyway you will get main idea yes when you get this link, yes you will see this green button okay uh this grid i created for aal foundation steam moderator okay what you will it will be good if you will click this button green button and you will add 90 seconds your video about your topic and in our topic moderators i provide this link and uh, our students of our course would be able to get some information about all teachers uh, who teach English and uh, science subjects. What you will need to do, just uh, allow camera. Now I can't do it because my computer uses camera and camera is not available now for flip. -grid. Okay. It's with Skype. But you will able to use without Skype and your camera will be available for you. You just click allow and add 90 seconds of yeah, me, uh, okay. video. Just tell something about your course, what uh -huh. you're going to teach, how do you teach, and so on. All right, going back to Skype now. That is what you ca I can see on my screen. Now you see all this, our... Yes. Okay, yes. and also part of this my is... screen. Uh -huh. You see, this one it's double because through Skype right. I share my screen and you see my screen. Well... Magola, it will be okay. it just my congratulations that you come mm -hmm. on Skype, and uh, it's a really amazing tool, and uh, we can uh, actually now if you. If you use Screencast-O-Matic, you can make your screen, uh, push it in before you get started, just so you can access the uh, bars, up and down bar on your computer, and then your choices if you want to change, and then you can change what you see, like uh, you can show a different uh, program or whatever, it will show what's on your screen. So. Like right there. Yes. Okay. Now, if you move it over, you'll see. Okay, do you see where the bars are? If you move your screen over so it doesn't cover up that bar, mm -hmm. you can still move that bar. But once you've covered it with your screen on Screencast-O-Matic, you don't have access to it. You have to turn it off, whatever. But just play around with Screencast-O-Matic. You'll just be shocked at how easy it is and how nice it is. And they have tutorials online and stuff like that. If you haven't haven't started using it, I think I pay fifteen dollars a year for a few extra things. But you don't have to. You can get it for free. But it's one of the few things I don't get anything that's not free. <laughs> that's terrible. Except Screencast-O-Matic, I do pay for it. You know, so. Just an option. Yes. But you can see on my screen that uh, screen customatic in all. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I can. So, Where can, uh, we, I, where can we get uh, the code? Code? Uh, Here, once where, again. Uh, this one. Where can we get the code from the beginning? Right. This yeah, on one. our front page. Uh, can you see? I provided this code. You highlight okay. If you go first, moderator, that is our course, moderator, click moderators, okay. 
and that is okay. our okay. teachers. Right. And here you please copy and paste code, this code, highlight and mm -hmm. copy in clipboard. After that, scroll down and go to Flipgrid. That is an external tool for Moodle. It's much and easier to do everything good. without Moodle, but we have to do it from Moodle. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and after that, you will copy this. Yeah. Paste this. Don't forget, though, when we're all finished, when you're finished, I mean, you still need to put all your videos and things like that on Padlet. Has everybody, yes, exactly. has everybody oh, used yes. Padlet? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And and Dr. Nelly has a link there when we're going to that last little bit on week four. There's a link that gets you right to it, and you just add yours in to everybody else's. It's pretty self-explanatory when you get there. Exactly. Yes. Uh, is this recorded? Huh? Is this? Is this recorded? That is our Skype mm -hmm. now. Uh, yeah. I I'm, come at the now moment I'm, I'm using a tablet. Mm -hmm. I, I can't see Skype. some of the things because my desktop doesn't have a, a cam, mm -hmm. and my laptop is very slow. Yes, mm -hmm. this is everything right here. So, except Amelia. Right okay, here. Can you see me moving that? Okay. And do it. Oh. Yeah, Amelia's not here. Now, you'll see that on Helen's, but Helen called us all. You probably won't see that on your Skype, that Amelia on there. You won't probably see Amelia Dan. Yeah, Amelia, yes, but she was online now. Right. She's not online. Right. She's right. offline now. She's and see, all I see on mine is Helen, and that may be all you all see, but now Helen has all of us on there because she just talked to us. Yeah, I collected and I forced people to create. That's all right. I, I had one, and I used to use Skype all the time, but... I don't know. They went through a stage where they were charging, and then I just got real disinterested, and it was complicated. It, they changed ownership, and, you know, I moved on to Hangouts, Google Hangouts, Facebook Messenger. That's a good one, too. Mm -hmm. Do you all belong to Teachers Teaching Teachers on Facebook? Have you joined any of those groups yet? Any? Okay, okay. I'll try to make a list. And then if you want to join any of them, you can just pick them and join uh, the groups. But the, what they are is groups that Dr. Nelly has started. So if something new is happening or she's got a class coming up, it'll all be there. So that's uh, one of the best reasons to get onto it because you can find out what's happening. No, yes? I, I see you. I see you. So we can each control this. Ah! Oh, sorry, Zara. Can, am I changing your screens or just mine? No, you, you can't control my screen. Okay. You control just yours. Okay, well, just mm -hmm. a minute ago, I could only see one person, and now I was like, how'd that happen? And then there's this little icon just above the message center there at the top on your screen, and it's got like a big a rectangle, and it's got three little tiny rectangles underneath it. And when I click on it, then I can see all, all four of you. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you, uh, I guess you can do that too. Right. Now I clicked off of that. Yeah, I did it. And I can see part of Helen. Uh, with me, I can't see the person. There we go. I think the problem is I'm using the picture here. <laughs> yeah. I cannot see the button. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now I've got four of you. Okay. It's a little, uh, can you see? Uh, there we go. Oh, something's happening. Hup. Somebody's got to 
cute screen. Okay, who share screen? Is it you? No, 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 no. Carmen, is that Carmen? Carmen, is it yours? Pretty baby. <laughs> Yeah. You have a lot of files on your desktop. <laughs> yeah, too many. Okay, so what did you... Uh, well, who is this beautiful baby? Uh, that's uh -huh. my nephew. Oh, that's so uh -huh. cute. Thank you. Okay, so how did you do that? What did you Sorry. click to do the screen share? Uh... As uh, Helen showed, or whoever, <laughs> I don't, I don't quite remember because. Oh, where okay, is, uh, I see. Under yeah, I've got my enlarged. That's why I can't there see it. Is. Okay. Okay, I got it. Thank you. <laughs> Start. Uh, no. Oh, you all keep all files. On the yes. Store, yeah? I do. Not everything. When I work on a class, I throw everything onto the screen. And then when I'm done with the class, then I put them all in a file. Because if I don't, I'll be hunting around for who knows where. You know, I forget what my title, my files. <laughs> you have to have a guide to the files, you know. <laughs> anyway. Uh, before we have to stop soon, yes. because uh, Dr. Nelly yes. will start And Magola, can oh, yeah. I ask you a question? Magola, can you hear me? Magola, can you hear me? I can hear you. Very good, thank you. Uh, you mentioned in some message uh, that uh, you started to use voice thread. If you don't yeah. mind, uh, can you show us how to use next time? For example, you can organize meeting on Skype mm -hmm. or uh, with a call and show us what did you learn and uh, we will learn how to use. I still did not have a chance to learn, but I know that is a great tool. I tried oh. to and I inserted to my one. So after... Uh -huh. Oh, it's good. So it's after good. Dr. Nelly's class. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. Yes. On which I Right. It's still giving us a lot of problems. Uh, right now I'm using the tablet and I can't see any buttons. And my laptop is very, very slow and my desktop doesn't have okay. uh, a cam. So, but if I can get in, this is uh, a Okay. Still giving some little problems. Great. All Hello? right. But most important, we got this so yes. far. Yes. Okay, so it's <laughs> six fifty-four. Will this time mm -hmm. tomorrow be okay for all of you? Will this time yes. tomorrow be okay for all of you? Yes. Tomorrow, let's Hello? try. Yes. Yeah, let's, let's try. Let's try this. Yes. The same time because we don't need to convert. The conversion is done. Yes, that time. sounds great. Meeting for tomorrow. This time. Great. Uh, I, I'm not here tomorrow. So you can't come tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll do that. Zara, are you? Is tomorrow not good? Tomorrow this time. I I'm not going to be free tomorrow. Uh, I'm no, I'm not oh. free tomorrow, but I can right. see the recording. If you record the session, right. I can still use it. Okay. No okay. All right, we'll see you in class here in just a moment. Bye. And discuss the teamwork policies in Google Drive. We copied the one that Dr. Nelly shared with us. Then we adjusted it for ourselves. In the teamwork policy, we each took a color and used that color to describe ourselves and to tell things that we would do. We gave information about our details of our members, how we could get hold of each other on Facebook. It's very important because sometimes if you can't get hold of someone through the Moodle or you are it's time sensitive, you might need to use Skype or Facebook Messenger or some other way to talk to each other. 
I shared information that I thought would bring help to us as a team. What would problems be? Synchronous communication, deciding on a format to provide continuity of effort. For instance, for Helen Chinobi, she's in Australia and the time difference is 15 hours apart from where I am. These are all things you have to take into, into account. Then it says things that you would be able to do and rules, keep track of all notes. I did have one thing. I did suggest that we have a a um, a workbook. I had used that with Nevis Teresi when we were working on our EVO games in the classroom workshop. Everybody was interested, but there was just not enough time to implement that. I would like to make up a little video on how to do that for the future so I can pursue that with other body, everybody else. I was trying to get them to go to a one form of synchronous and asynchronous write in a notebook diary at the end of this document or email and like I said there just wasn't the time to implement that but there was interest and I appreciate everybody taking the time to listen to me on that particular topic because I know it made our communications between Nevis and I user-friendly and it did help if there were severe problems we could take care of that right away. Week four we developed a team syllabus we shared the syllabus we were able to get some feedback from the other teams also when we put in our team syllabus. Sometimes writing in a Google Doc there can be issues. I tried to help with as many issues as we can. For instance I did change this abstract to overview in our a real class because an abstract is good if you're doing a research project but overview would be better and I saw that in Dr. Nelly's classes and other people's courses. Duration of the course, what do they expect us to do, be able to do. Now these are all rough drafts as we said. These changed and of course this was completed at the end of week three so we had time to meet in week four, we had time to talk about it, we had time to let it evolve and grow within our team. After we did that and we actually got into week four we began to put things together in our new class referred to as MM12 Foundation Studies for International Students and how we fleshed this out was that we had a place for everyone. For instance Magala has a physics course that he developed and it was about mechanics. Information technology was a course that uh, Amelia Dan developed. General English Foundation Mathematics was Helen. Carmen had a section. Also Zara had a lot of work wanting to implement English for academic purposes and also bringing the English learning into the classroom. I would recommend if we were going to do this as a real course that we would consider um, if not using all of CLIL at, use, at least trying to use some of the components of CLIL. In the end, here's our overview and syllabus. An overview. I thought everybody did a great job the editing. We each went in and added information or made the information more compact. I tried to go through and make sure that the grammar was um, appropriate. So here are our topics. Foundation Mathematics Earth, Sun, and Life, which is my final topic area that I selected. Understanding the interaction between the Sun and the Earth hydrosphere, biosphere, lithosphere, and atmosphere. Basically, it's what we call phenology. I'm going to focus in this first uh, course that we were talking about strictly on the interactions between the Sun and Earth and how that affects living things. For instance, when you plant sunflower seeds and they're planted outside in the sunlight, full sun, not partial sun, not indoor light, you will notice that as they begin to develop and start getting ready to make a bud, they will actually follow the sun as it goes from the east in the morning to the west in the evening. Now that continues all the way through their life cycle until they reach their full bloom potential. Then the next thing that's important to them is to make sure that they're pollinated. Plants that are pollinated first are the ones who are nice and warm for the bees when they come there because that it helps the bees 
smell and taste pollen and all the other things that help them know to get food, nectar and pollen from this plant. That's why sunflowers in full bloom face east at all times. There's things like that that I'd like to bring in and I set up galleries and things of that sort to implement opportunities for students to learn in their own context. Maybe they don't have sunflowers or can't grow sunflowers in their area so they've never seen that before but maybe they know another plant or some other type of animal or something like that that reacts in a certain way just because of the way the sun is in the winter, in the summer. All areas of the earth do not have four seasons. It's only a very small band in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere that even have four seasons. Oftentimes you'll find that a place may only have two seasons. For instance, around uh, the Amazon area, they have rainy season and dry season. That's a branching off point. I wanted to keep it real simple because this is a really vast, broad topic. And I wanted first to capture students' interests and try to draw out their stories and their context. We have our timeline. We have a place for announcements, introductions, and enrollment. That was a joint venture for all of us. Then we have our teachers. Now Carmen liked this one. This is a little bad she made. For best colleagues, I liked it. I click on any one of these and you would go to a uh, website or a profile picture, profile information for each one of these teachers. Several of our team made areas like the collaboration zone. In this zone, we can discuss team activities and prepare for designing our course. We all had meetings. We did all get together for a particular class. Introduction to mechanics, a form of a area in physics. And Magala had worked on this. He had a course information under English for academic purposes. Zara had introduced us to language skills you need for your academic studies. She had a syllabus and a weekly schedule that she had developed. In the information technology area, Amelia Dan made a wonderful area for her course, told the weeks that she was in session, developed her course objective. Then she talked about application of information technology. In some of the notes and, and messages, there was a mention of not wanting moderators to be used. I didn't understand what that was, and I think everybody may have just been, you know, time went on and they weren't able to explain that to me. But whatever. If we could, we could use our teachers, we could use collaboration zone, we could use moderators. But you've got to tell who the people are that are giving the course. I like the way that Dr. Nelly does it at the very beginning uh, in the videos and then it gets on the front page of various items. We had developed a QR code, which is a specific type of uh, barcode that's in a matrix. Now to Earth, Sun, and Life. I want to give a pretest and a post-test. I just um, decided that I would not call them that. I called them Earth-Sun relationship, what I'm learning, and Earth-Sun relationship, where I live, and in the end we're going to do a compare contrast of the Earth-Sun relationship. For instance, if it's winter in the northern hemisphere, it would be summer in the southern hemisphere because of the tilt of the Earth. I had a place to put prior knowledge, read and answer the questionnaire, Something I liked in the compare contrast, I decided that I would put uh, videos, and so I did that. Most of these videos are made by garden hobbyists, teachers. They were good enough to see what would happen. I made a glossary. I thought that the glossary could be helpful for the teacher who is working on the English. That is how we developed our courses. We have Foundation Mathematics. Helen is very experienced with using Moodle, and so she had been using this. She has information about the skills that she's wanting to do in her own book. And this goes along with her work at school. General English. There was a live introduction in this class. Superstar Certificate. Information about sharing with their colleagues. From Carmen, a project she did at her school. And a flip grid that we did together. So there's a flip grid of 
most of us that are on here. There's my video, and you can see everybody together there. I'm Amelia, Helen, Magala, Cheryl. It was just a brief video to explain who we were and what we were doing. Hello, I'm Cheryl McCoy, and I'll be sharing with you information and classes and lessons in the Earth Science Studies of Weather and Climate. This will give you a great opportunity to have a basic understanding of words and directions that can help you in conversations to improve your English. I took information that I had been using, I compacted this down and used it to talk about the part of weather and climate, that way people would understand it and relate to it in their own life. Flipgrid is one of the activities that you can add to your classroom. So thanks Carmen, nice job. Nice job to everyone. I'm really proud to be working on, your, on the team with you all. It's just been a real pleasure. As our team ended our EAL Foundations course, I would like to highlight some of what I believe are the most important parts of the process and resulted in a nice product. A great plan, we d developed that from week one. We all worked together, we stayed together. This is probably one of the first times that I've been in a course where everybody was there from the beginning and the end. It was multidisciplinary. We had people who were just focusing on how to speak in English and what words would go with various lessons as an adjunct to our disciplinary classes. And it was interdisciplinary. There were merging of information and the language, the focus, was all dispersed across all of our areas. Yes, it's finished for this class, but it's never complete. And that's the beauty of this, because we can use this as a, if you will, like a base. Uh, you know, when you make soup, you often start with the same type of base. You might have a clear base, like a broth base, or you might even have like a tomato base. Well, that's the way this course is. It is our base course, but we can diverge from that and integrate other people into it and other topics and develop the criteria from there. So here at the end, I would like to say, now what, so what? So now what means to me that um, I can now sit down and develop a complete course of my own individually to provide information and guidance for other people. I can jet out from this base course with courses for teachers. I can jet out with something that could be used for smaller children with their parents or something for middle school, high school, students. So what? Well, each person on my team and myself brings a special individual value to this class. The value is our experiences based on our education, how we were raised, where we lived, and our ability quite frankly, to interact with other people effectively. That was what was so wonderful about this course, um, this team. Each of these people that were on my team were committed to learning more about each other, finding guidance along the way, and listening to one another. No one was in particularly um, necessarily decided that they were also always going to be the leader. We had a person who was a good facilitator, but here and there each one of us would rise to the occasion and lead a, set, a certain section and that's why it was so wonderful because we shared 
the chores and the joys of completing this course. That sums it up. We'll be working in this area as we go along and I'm hoping that you will find this to be a good course that you would be interested in taking. Thank you.